Hi guys, today I wanted to share my chocolate chip cookies recipe with you. I like to make these cookies specifically to bring happiness and a feeling of love to all those who enjoy them. This recipe takes a bit of time to prepare, but I assure you it's well worth it. I hope you enjoy this video and possibly even make these for yourself. For this recipe, you will need bread flour, cake flour, baking soda, baking powder, brown sugar, white sugar, chocolate chips, I'm using bittersweet ones, three sticks of butter, vanilla extract, two eggs, salt, and for extra magic, some moon water. I'm using some I collected from the Virgo full moon because to me Virgos are caring and loving towards their close ones. And yes, I'm a bit biased because I'm a Virgo. So I like to start out with a fresh and clean kitchen. I do all the dishes and wipe down the countertops. The purpose is to of course disinfect and sanitize my work area, but also get rid of any stagnant energy that's still hanging out. I want to clear out the negative energy from my kitchen, and to do that I'm using this energizing pure aura mist from the Wild Rose Garden. I recently purchased this and have been in love with it. I can leave a link below to the website if you guys wanted to check it out for yourself. Next I am lighting this peaceful home candle I recently bought from my local botanica. I cleansed and loaded it with herbs for peace and happiness and found that it really boosts the positive energy in my home when it is lit. The first thing I do when making these cookies is brown the butter. I put all three sticks in my stainless steel pan over medium heat and stir occasionally. You'll know it's ready when it has a deep, nutty smell and turns slightly brown. You want to be careful not to burn the butter. Overall, this process takes me 10 to 15 minutes. I then transferred the melted butter to my heat-safe measuring bowl. You want one and a quarter cups of butter overall. If you come up short, add a little water to get you there. That goes in the fridge for an hour or so to come up to room temp. When it's chilled enough, it will be slightly thicker, but you will still be able to stir it. I like to use a scale when I bake to be more precise and produce consistent results. I added 8.5 ounces of both bread and cake flour. This comes to about 1 and 2 thirds cup of bread flour and 2 cups minus 2 tablespoons of cake flour. I then added one and a quarter teaspoons of baking soda. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And one and a half teaspoons of salt. I gently stirred those up, inviting in feelings of love and happiness to the mix. Next, I weighed out the sugars in a large bowl. I was going for 10 ounces of brown sugar and 8 ounces of white sugar. This is about 1 and a quarter cups of brown sugar and 1 cup plus 2 tablespoons of white sugar. I moved the sugars to my stand mixer and added in the browned butter, which you can see has thickened up a bit more by now. I turned the mixer on to its slowest setting and pulsed it for a bit before turning the speed up in order to cream these ingredients. That went for about 5 minutes before I went ahead and scraped down the sides and added the eggs in one at a time, being sure it was fully combined before adding in the next. I turned the speed of the mixer down a bit and added 2 teaspoons of natural vanilla extract.
Next, I finally grabbed my moon water and sprinkled in a couple drops to the mix. I charged it with those nurturing, feminine energies I feel that Virgo embodies. Again, I took a few seconds here to invite in those warm and fuzzy feelings. I turned the speed all the way down again and very slowly added in the flower combination. When it was just combined, I took it off the stand mixer and continued stirring with my spatula. As you can see, not all the flour is mixed in. We want to avoid overmixing so we don't end up with tough cookies. Next is the best part. We add in the chocolate chips. I used the rest of the chocolate chips I had in my pantry, which came out to just over a pound. I gently stirred the mixture until I felt it was fully combined. I covered the dough with plastic wrap, pressing it down to form an airtight seal. I used a couple sheets of the wrap to be sure no air was getting in. The dough will go in the fridge for at least 24 hours. I actually let this dough age for three days. This allows all the flavors in the dough to combine and meld together and make a really wonderful cookie. Of course, I had to clean the entire kitchen again because I made such a mess. To me, cleaning is therapeutic and nearly a form of meditation, so I somehow actually enjoy it. When the dough is finally done aging, I take it out first thing in the morning. It's best to let it rest at room temperature for a few hours because it is softer and easier to form the cookies. While the dough is out, I preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I mix up the dough a little with my spoon to make it easier to scoop out. I use about a small handful of dough per cookie. I like them a bit bigger though, so feel free to adjust accordingly. Each little dough ball goes on a baking sheet with enough room to flatten out just a bit. I found that these cookies don't flatten all that much though, which makes for softer and gooier middles. Overall, I was able to make about 26 cookies with this recipe. As an optional final step before baking, I use my fancy Maldon smoked sea salt. This is just some flaky salt with a subtle smoky taste that brings a new dimension to these cookies. I sprinkle just a little over each cookie. I'm sure you could use any other salt to give it that crunchy bite as well. I'm just a bit extra when it comes to baking sometimes. I put the baking sheets in the oven one at a time checking after 8 minutes. Some of the bigger ones went in for a full 10 minutes. You'll know when they're done when the outside is just slightly beginning to brown, like seen here. These are my absolute favorite cookie to make for all my loved ones. They have such a variety of flavors and a soft and chocolate layered middle. They definitely don't last long in my house. I hope you enjoyed this video and would love to know if you tried this recipe. I've put the full text of the recipe down below. Let me know what you thought and if you would make any changes. Thanks again for watching.